What's up Tank Nerds? Lottie here again. Today I'm going to try and stay focused and not get distracted by so many shiny things. Uh, we're going to talk about the crankshaft, the block, and the liners that Peter is working on at the moment. Right, I'm trying to get technical here. So the crank came back yesterday, all very nice and shiny for us, all linish, which is really nice. Uh, now the hard stuff begins. So I've already done most of it, and that is putting the end caps, which are these ones, back on. I've left the uh, this side open just so you can see. So you can see there was quite a bit of stuff in them, but it's all been knocked out. And we've made sure that all of the holes, so these are the oil uh, galleries, so they run all the way through this. So it's very essential that everything is cleaned properly. Some of these, let me see if I can find one. Some of these are cross-drilled. Now I'm going to... Course miss it. There we go. Here's one. So you'll see this one is drilled at an angle, and that's because it goes from here. Move my T out of the way. It goes from here all the way through into this one. You can see it pop out. No, oh, you can't because that one's covered. Uh, you'll take my word for it. It goes from here all the way through, and it does that zigzagging all the way through the crankshaft. So this is a major component for the. Uh, oil supply for the entire engine. If any of these block up, you don't get supply out of these into the pistons and you get failure. So it's very essential that everything in this is done correctly. So these, I haven't done this one up, but you can see they're just a little cap like these. So I'll clean these ones up. Most of the uh, face of these doesn't matter. It only matters that this edge here, this face, is nice and clean because it's an interference. Nice machined fit. So they sit in there nice and tight. And then you get one of these and you bolt them up. Nice and tight. We've added a little bit of um, sealant on it just to make doubly sure because these need to hold 60 PSI of pressure. If any of these fail, there will be an immediate and noticeable drop in pressure in the engine. And we can't have that happen because this is an absolute pain to get in and out. So we are being very cautious with these ones. But it's looking really, really good. So I haven't had any um, significant troubles. And we've even uh, lock, lock wired them just to be perfectly safe. So yeah, that's the good news. Now, bad news, cranky bad news. We've been working, or rather Peter's been uh, on the block this morning. Everything was going good until he tried putting the head bolts in. So these are the head bolts, our nice shiny new ones that we really like. And they go, of course it's upside down now. Uh, we just need to replace the ones that broke off and had to be taken out. Well, we found two of them are a different thread, <laughs> which is not great at all. So it means we can't do the head bolts today. So two of these are going to have to get machined uh, to fit this thread pattern before we can go any further. So that's made us a little little cranky. Aren't you, Peter? Cranky. Never cranky. Okay, Peter's not cranky, but I am. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to have to get these uh, engineered down to fit uh, to look like this thread. So that's an unfortunate surprise. It's not the end of the world. We still have other stuff to do. Uh, Peter's been fitting all of these back in. And once I'm done with the crank, we will install it. 
and that should be nice and good. But yeah, it's these little roadblocks that you encounter, which aren't so fun. Now, Peter has been working on putting the liners back in. So this is actually upside down now. There we go. So we've used our special anaerobic sealant to put these in. And now Peter is feeding uh, the O-ring seals in through the bottom. If there was any doubt <laughs> to how annoyingly complicated this is, these are all the seals that need to go back into this engine at some point. How many seals are in this, Peter? In the engine? In the engine. 519 O-rings. There we go. 519 O-rings. And we are on I've, number one. <laughs> yeah, one's already in the box. Oh, one's already in. Yep. One's already in there. One's already in there. You obviously can't see it, but and it'll I'll be in there. Putting seven in here. Seven in there. Seven in there. Then a cage on the top, and then another one on top of that, which goes onto the block. So in each liner, there's seven, eight, nine. Nine. So yeah. And then someone's got the unlucky job of, probably me, of putting O-rings on these ones. And there's 162 O-rings to go on the water. Yeah. Yep. There's lots. So yeah, that is, that, that is our boring day today. So engine building, it's long, it's tedious. We get through it quite quickly, actually, but it's all essential work. Everything needs to be checked, cleaned, made proper. If we get any failures in any of these seals, any of those, any of those, uh, the engine is dead or dying, and we don't want to do this again. So, yeah. But we're not too worried. We've already got that one going, and she's going absolutely perfect so there you have it that's just a nice quick tuesday update uh not really much more uh it's pretty boring one today if i'm perfectly honest but that's just because it's the boring jobs today nothing quite so flash or finicky when i do get bored i'll do a bit more cleaning polishing of little plugs and stuff uh, this is going to be a very pretty engine when we're done with it. But we just got to do all the tedious stuff right now. So enjoy the rest of your day. Ask questions, like answering questions, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the groovy fun stuff. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.